interesting article courtesy of Hypebeast, which features a look around the new DICE headquarters in London. First of all, it's odd that Hypebeast are pushing this on their site like you know it's just a company that has done a refurb of the office and they're featuring the, the you know the, the refurb on their site i'm not too sure if this is kind of a partnership thing that they're not really announcing or if it's just what you know you would do for a company that kind of exists within this sort of like streetwear creative trendy hipstery scene and obviously it's probably designed by a very well-known architectural firm so it probably works as an opportunity to show off the skills of the architectural firm, some of the things that have been done in your office that are quite impressive that everybody would kind of want to look at in terms of furniture, design, and whatever it may be. And then you would imagine it probably is a very sly way to advertise DICE as a company, maybe to prospective investors, maybe to potential employees, and just to kind of give the, you know, to kind of give people an insight behind the curtains, a peek behind the curtain, sorry, as to what goes on at the head office and what it kind of looks like at the headquarters here in London. So I guess that makes complete sense in that regard. But um, it also does remind me of a time back in my days when I was coming up in a scene of when this sort of stuff would really excite me. Now I don't really give a fuck. I mean, it doesn't really matter because I know now working for companies usually, unfortunately, for the most part, when you work for companies and they have really spanky, amazing, well-designed, um, really tasteful offices like they have here, most likely the working conditions are terrible. That's the real shame about it. It's not even like they go hand in hand. If you go to an office and they've got bean bags, they've got table tennis, they've got um, you, they've got these clear glass jars on the kitchen counter full of unlimited snacks that don't look like they ever run out. Um, they give you a hamper during your birthday. They have unofficial drinks every Friday. They have pizzas when they have team meetings, right they have all hands they have beers all this sort of stuff most likely the working conditions um aren't going to be the greatest so you have to give up one for the other which might not be the baddest bargain to make if this office is located in a decent location somewhere in london you could potentially have the privilege and the and the fucking grace and the luck to actually be able to work walk to work which i've never had the ability to do because i've never lived in trendy areas in london i've always kind of lived in the hoods and shit but if you live in a trendy area and the office isn't too far, you get to work for a cool company and you get to walk to work, which is a incredible, incredible, incredible gift um, to have because you save so much money on fucking transport, which is cost an arm and a leg here in London, which is probably why everybody cycles. But then not everybody wants to cycle here because it's also really dangerous to cycle because number one, your bike could get jacked and you could get run over and your brains could be splattered all across, you know, Clapton Pond and shit and no one will be there to fucking scream and call the police for you because everybody kind of pretends like they don't see shit so it becomes a real problem but sometimes all these things can really be an advantage and can sometimes make up for the lack of good working conditions the lack of company culture the lack of maybe um whatever you know just drive in a company the lack of kind of feeling like you're a part of a team and that you're feeling like you're being seen and you're giving work that's making you um, improve as a person blah 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 maybe having the ability to go into the office where it looks the way it does where maybe you're able to stay here late and record your own content you can have meetings in this incredible spaces and shit um there's access to incredible coffee table books they've got great wi-fi nice refreshments drinks and shit um meeting rooms at work uh, uh, whatever all that stuff right free macbook that sort of stuff some people maybe accept that over the, the kind of you know what it looks like and shit for me having had a lot of experience working in startups and shit and other big corporations i would have to say that i am a big stickler on working conditions um i think knowing what you know kind of having have an understanding of your role and what job and what role your and what how your role affects the entire company like the you know how it kind of goes and shit and how you contribute to what is happening there um feeling as if like you're being seen feeling as if like your work matters um and just general company culture for me and obviously pay are the most important things for me more so than having a trendy office, more so than having a cool place to park your bike, more pl more so than having, they probably got a little DJ booth there you can, where you can play some tunes. Maybe all the wannabe DJs in the office can play their own sets there. All that stuff is important. Don't get me wrong. It adds to it, especially for Dice because they're basically an event ticket in platform and shit, right? And they do their own events too, I'm imagining. So it's probably handy to have those things to be tied intrinsically to music. But what you really want is just to feel like you're working in a place where 
you know you're respected um your work is honored you feel like you're part of a good team and shit and whatever it may be all the architectural shit could probably be the bias you know it could, it could probably be something one of the last things that you really kind of bother about but hey maybe i'm in the wrong here let's read the article a little bit courtesy of hype piece it says stellar concept has transformed a four floor four floors jesus christ dice is blowing up in it but it makes sense didn't they buy a boiler room recently, right? They bought boiler room, I'm pretty sure. So it just makes sense. Um, has transformed a fourth floor Victorian building into the home of ticketing and live event platform Dice. Located in East London, the headquarters has been designed to feel homely with warm tones and tasteful details employed throughout. Um, for D Dice CEO Philip Hutchinson, Philip Hutchinson, Hutchion, or Hutchin, no, Hutchion, I think his name is, uh, Dice CEO Phil Hutchion, in addition to providing an inspiring place for employees and avoiding gimmicky office designs, was paramount. We kept meeting design firms and they were all the same, functional or wacky designs that felt like an office I would never want to work in. I didn't want another office. I wanted a space where people felt inspired. That's true. To be fair, it does look different than the usual offices that you'd see in old street and shoreditch and other parts of london where all the cool trendy offices are and shit right it doesn't look like it's full of bean bags there is no one table tennis or pool table or darts thing to be seen so far um that's pretty nice there's none of that um cringy fake astro turf on the outside balcony right like it's it looks pretty decent like it just looks like a really well-designed home that you'd see in architectural digest so big up them for doing that i guess um let's continue with the blurb here um a regular at the non on sorry a regular at the on-site cafe hachian asks to meet the team behind his interior design and as such um seller concept was brought on board overall the team took a modern yet warm approach inspired by italian designer um gay uletti aulenti she believed in the power of the occupants in making a room um seller concepts creative director and founder Tatjana von Stein kept focus on the people who use the space. Wow, boy, that's a really cool office. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. That building is great. It looks like an old factory. It says Collins and Hayes. Maybe it's a sugar factory or something. Who fucking knows? But it looks really, really cool. The actual building itself. And I love the fact that they haven't fucked around with the um what would you call it with the exterior too much sometimes buildings like this anyway there is a lot of restrictions around what you can do to the outside of it so maybe a lot of it isn't like their decisions they just can't you know you're not really allowed to like strip this back and turn it into a fucking mcmansion but i still like the fact that they did leave it fairly the same as it probably was probably stripped away some of the gunk on the walls and shit but i like it's just got exposed brick all the glass there loads of natural light coming into all the rooms you know what i mean it doesn't look crazy um i do actually like the exterior i'm not gonna lie some more pictures of the office here got some nice chairs um i love the use of the metals or the steels for the cabinets and shit i really do like the look of it it gives it an industrial feel it also kind of feels warmly warm sorry but it also doesn't divide or split the rooms up too much maybe that's the whole point it kind of makes things flow it's sort of like a way of using glass you know people use glass to make rooms feel bigger i feel like using this sort of steel sort of design also allows the rooms to feel like they're all connected and obviously with the holes inside of them you can see through and shit but it doesn't feel like you know big black blocks of wood and shit obviously it's allowed to expose beams here i love this flipping um really nice u type type um sofa here to chill on and have a good time that'll probably be full of gunk and all this rubbish and shit when people get in the christmas party spirit and somebody gets you know finger banged on the sofa here probably that'll probably get a bit crazy um again nice desk nice table yeah this is a really nice office i'm not gonna lie it kind of reminds me a little bit of like, one of the acne studios acne studio store maybe it was one of the refurbishments they did recently it kind of has a little bit of a vibe of an acne studio store maybe the architectural firm did that as well i'm not too sure but it does give me it's giving acne studios um uh, it's also giving um whatever that hotel is in london in shoreditch is it additions i don't know what it was called before but it's kind of giving one of those type of vibes it's got like a really trendy hotel lobby type of feel to it um a little bit less stark than the hotel lobby but it does kind of feel like that tiny bit when you're looking at it again oh look at the flipping kitchen counters i like that there's the, I guess that's the bit where they where you can fill up your glass to get some water um, or whatever it may be. And it's all kind of this weird um, mirrored warped design of steel as well, which looks pretty good. Gives it nice space. And again, loads of use of, I guess, loads of woods, loads of metals and steels. Um, all the sofas have been upholstered, got upholstery on them and feel really nice and warm. 
those are really cool i'm assuming these could be little meeting bits as well where you could have like you know little chats in here where you, when you can't use the meeting room and you can kind of gather around and look at you know look at the screen of your macbooks and flick through the decks of your presentations just before you go and present it to an office full of people who don't really want to hear what you have to say we have to do it anyway i love this pyramid design or this kind of you know is it pyramid design whatever this step design is called um where you could kind of sit around as a group and do what you've been doing there it kind of reminds me a little bit of the when i left depop they had in the foyer they had like this little they had this little step thing that you could kind of sit down on and shit it's kind of nice way to kind of have a bit of space that isn't connected to the main office where you can kind of relax and shit and have shoot the shit with your friends or your colleagues at work let's continue the article this is on the ground floor um an open flan is a sociable flexible and has the ability to transform into an event space here integrated seating elsewhere and accommodated the company's monthly team talks a dj booth has been placed on the central platform nice across the first second floors workspaces and meeting rooms are dotted while the top floor offers a space for a quiet research and reading with a library full of books okay i like that idea i like that all the hustle and bustle is on these earlier floors and then when you get to the top it gets really quiet i'm guessing that's the last slide that we saw here when you get to the top that's where the sort of like library ish type style things are so it's around here right this is where all the quiety bits where you can come and like sit down and have whispery meetings and obviously read your book and shit that you've only got into the first couple of pages and pretend like you know what you're doing and um, for most of the furniture seller concept came up with the bespoke designs which have been made by British craftspeople and a combination of res responsibly sourced cotton, stainless steel, and wood. To add to the lived in feel, vintage pieces were selected and slotted in around the entire office. Take a look around, bloody blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it looks really good. Um, big up Seller Complex for putting it together. Big up Dice for promoting it, I guess, on here. And I'm assuming there's going to be a bunch of people out there that are going to be like, you know what? This office looks banging. I want to work there. But like I said before, um, just keep in mind that just because the office looks trendy doesn't mean the work environment is going to be the greatest. So, just, you you know obviously inquire obviously find out um there's sites like glassdoor that exists for a reason um see what people are saying on there make an account if you can't log in and read the reviews and see what people have said about working in those places the interview process bloody blah 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 what the promotions are like all these things and usually try and read all the reviews it doesn't matter if the person isn't working in it doesn't matter if the review isn't in the area that you want to work in or the, for the role you want to apply for make sure you read all the reviews because most likely the common complaints about a company will be felt in various roles regardless of if they prefer the manager they work underneath or not whatever company culture things that get under their skin or whatever work x they have will probably be universal so make sure you check things like Glassdoor, inquire find out um because you know with, when it comes to jobs you really have to have a good level of job satisfaction and feel comfortable in the space you're in in order to do your best work that's my personal humble opinion i think those things are far more important than having good wi-fi and trendy office spaces but it obviously does help because you spend a lot of your time over there so it does make a lot of sense